I'm currently driving to a test spot. Uh, looks like it should be good from Google Maps, but I think the area is actually like a hot spot for fishing. So hopefully we don't have anybody there taking advantage of the uh, warm weather and nice evenings. Float in. Uh, it's not supposed to do that. It's just going around in circles. Hey, I'm Matt, AKA Matchstick. This is the first video in what's probably gonna be a multi-year series on my attempt at the Micro Transat. It's an international competition with the goal to send an autonomous or unmanned boat across the Atlantic Ocean. Usual entries to it are sailboats, so robotic boats effectively where they control their sails. I'm gonna be a little bit different. I'm going to do pure electric propulsion. So we're talking solar panels, propellers, and all the other power shenanigans that come along with it. I'm gonna start out small. I'm gonna see if I can actually build an autonomous boat, which is super, super basic. Let's find out. Build log, day one. I've got all the parts printed for this first boat prototype, and it took a lot longer than I thought it would do. I've had to split the model for the hull into multiple segments because it's a quite a large catamaran design and it's way too small to be printed in a single piece on my Cruiser Mini. The first parts came out really badly warped, so I went on a multi-month detour to build a 3D printing enclosure. That's a totally reasonable reaction, right? To join each section together, I used two-part epoxy. I think it was from the Gorilla Glue people, I think? And I scored each side for greater surface area for the epoxy to grab onto. In the front, I've designed in this void, which should act as almost like a buoyancy tank. It's gonna be completely sealed in, and obviously I've gotta fix all these gaps and everything. But the idea is we keep this as an air pocket so that we always have a bit of buoyancy in the front. So in the event of, say, a nosedive, the craft should remain in the water at the surface, so I should be able to retrieve it. This is where I wish I had more clamps. Because this is like super fast epoxy, we've introduced a wonky portion on this guy. Oh well, nature of the beast. To make sure the boat is waterproof, I bought a bunch more epoxy and painted on a good layer of it over the entire surface of the hull. This also made sure that the remaining gaps from print warps were filled up properly. I painted on the ABS cement over the surface to smooth layer lines and hopefully waterproof a little bit more. 3D printing this boat took about two months and I had to build this entire enclosure around it just to print ABS because I was just, I was getting failed print after failed print after failed print. Turns out this video's sponsor, PCBWay, actually have a 3D printing service available, which would have been super, super valuable to know about months ago. I didn't know it was a thing, I just figured PCB way, just do PCBs. But no, they have a bunch of different services available, such as, say, CNC milling, injection molding, sheet metal fabrication, and of course, the usual PCB milling and assembly stuff. What I think is super cool though, is the range of materials you can actually get access to through the 3D printing service. What blew my mind was the fact they let you print in metal. Metal printing. This boat in aluminium, imagine how shiny I could polish it. How just, oh. Make sure though to check out PCB Way. I put a link probably floating in my front of my face. Mr. Editor, please put it here. Thank you. As well as in the video description. Make sure to check them out. Let's get on with the build. Ah! Not very impressed by the quality of the epoxy I've used. Look at this back piece here, it's just peeling off in a sheet. For the top layer, I use TMAC Marine top coat in this really lovely glossy blue colour. It now needs 12 hours to dry, 
and another five to seven days to cure. So you know how you're supposed to measure twice and cut once, right? Well, it turns out it applies to CAD design as well. So with this, the holes for the M5 bolts to go through, they're 0.5 mil too small. Meaning this lid doesn't properly attach to the main body of the boat and therefore isn't as functional as it's supposed to be. So I'm gonna break out the drill again and sort those holes out with a slightly bigger drill bit. This is probably the worst soldering job I have ever done. The, uh, the pads on the back didn't properly adhere to the solder, so I've instead used them as sort of like retainer clips for these front bits, which have then made like a really nasty like solder wire. Don't breathe this stuff, kids. I'm using a PIX32 V5 as my uh, flight controller, I guess, which is connected over serial to a Raspberry Pi Zero for wireless telemetry. I don't know if it's just me, but this is looking more and more like a spinal cord with this being a brain and this being the nervous system. Systems test, ESC, power cable, I plugged into the PixHawk. See if this works. <laughs> We've got power. Pointy test. Let's see if this works. Now the water line is just above the hard chine. Oh, hello. We've got some ingress. Looks like it's coming up the prop shafts. Also, yes, this is my bathroom. <laughs> so the solution to that, I think, is to put some greasing compound in the prop shafts. I think I've got some Vaseline somewhere, so I'm gonna give that a try. You've probably noticed by now that I haven't got any rudders installed on this boat, and that's because I'm using differential thrust to provide your control. Transmitter on. Put some power in. Uh, watch as it doesn't want to do the thing. <laughs> it's supposed to go forwards, so... Yeah, that's going backwards. <laughs> I just need to spin the motors around and that'll be fine. They're supposed to be spinning the same speed, but this one is definitely a lot faster. So I wonder whether the motor is slipping in the flexible joint for this one. Um, the grub screws come out. That's not supposed to happen. Okay, spoiler alert. All I thought I had to do then was replace the grub screw and it'll be fine. Just keep an eye on that little guy. It comes up again. I'm currently driving to a test spot. Uh, looks like it should be good from Google Maps, but I think the area is actually like a hot spot for fishing. So hopefully we don't have anybody there taking advantage of the uh, warm weather and nice evenings. Float in. Uh, it's not supposed to do that. It's just going around in circles. So it's going forwards. It's turning to the right, which means that a right hand propeller is going backwards to cause that to happen like that so if i swap the wires on this guy it should work replacing the banana plugs hopefully that will now spin the other direction <laughs> let's not piss them off try again there we go being a bit ginger with it because obviously i don't want it to sink and then i have to get into this 
because my partner's gonna laugh like hell at me if I do that, to be honest. I think with a little bit of tuning, I'd be confident enough to do that with some waypoint missions next. Get some proper autonomy going on. Battery consumption, how are we looking? We are on 16.3 volts. So these same batteries were on Stanley and each flight with him with one of these lasted at most about five minutes before I had to realistically land it before we had a bit of an emergency problem on our hands. These seem to be lasting a hell of a lot longer. Now, obviously I haven't got any metrics in front of me to actually estimate the total running length of time, but these should be pretty good. I build a bolt. I build a bolt. I took Casper out for a run in a larger lake and initially it went well until I lost power in one of the motors and he drifted into some bushes, which meant I had to do a rescue mission. So it looks like what's happened is the universal joint has slipped off the prop shaft because I didn't do a good job of connecting the two. Let's take it back to the shop. You remember how we had a grub screw come out during a bathtub test? The solution here is going to be to take a Dremel and create sort of like a little flat surface on the prop shaft itself so the little grub screw can bite onto it properly and prevent it from slipping out again. I'm actually using safety gear this time. I noticed there was still some water getting in when a wave hit the top of the boat and somehow it got in. So I'm thinking perhaps my seal isn't exactly watertight. So to solve that, I'm just going to put a bunch more silicon sort of on its top edge around here, as well as other places where it makes sense. I've run out. I 3D printed these tools that were supposed to form the silicon into shape. They didn't work at all. Oh well, it'll be fine. I reinstalled the motors and a few days later, I went out for the next test. To help seal against water, I added some Velcro straps to tension down the middle section of the lid. I drove in some straight lines at between 60 and 80% throttle on the transmitter sticks. I then set the learn cruise speed setting on, which found I can cruise at about 1.5 meters per second when throttle is at 63%. I then left the PID controller for throttle alone, as it felt okay as is whilst in acro mode. I was finding the Wi-Fi link to the Raspberry Pi for telemetry to be incredibly slow, to the point where parameter updates took about a minute each. Now, I ignored that, and I'm gonna tell you right now, that was a really, really bad call. We now have some reverse throttle, which is pretty cool. I'm not entirely sure what's going on there, but we definitely have some kind of reverse throttle happening. Ow! <laughs> Stung myself again. <laughs> right, let's see what we're doing in terms of Water ingress, woo! No ingress there, but we do have ingress down here. So maybe that's just coming in through the prop shaft. So I might need to change out my greasing in there. And I think that one was the one that had less Vaseline in anyway. Let's get that yaw tuned. Tuning the yaw meant tweaking some PID controller values. The maximum turn rate for the vehicle was set at 180 degrees per second on a kind of guesstimate, to be honest. I raised the FF gain since the turning was quite sluggish when compared to manual mode. That seemed to work quite well, so I brought Casper back to tweak the P gain. But the motors failed before I could reach the shoreline. Yes! Yes! Success! Okay, two rescue attempts now. This ain't going well. The cause was a super delayed disarm command sent over the Wi-Fi link. I ended up switching telemetry over to an ESP32 running drone bridge, and I've not looked back since. I also did some improvements to the lid seal. I was able to get a new layer of silicone to kind of mold into the lid's inset edge using plastic wrap like a releasing agent. Oh, and I also installed a bunch more Velcro straps to kind of tension the lid down a bit more. Manual mode seems happy, so put it into acro. Some good turning. After the turn, Casper seemed to stop responding to all transmitter input. 
I was able to drop back to manual mode and regain control, thankfully. Put into acro now. That seems to be functional. What do you think? Have we got water ingress? It's in there again. It's actually pretty dry in the rest of it. That's all dry, so it's coming up the props draft. What did I tell you? What I think that means is we've got to do new lubrication slash water blockage in the prop tubes, and then we shouldn't have any issues. But what I'm going to do is because I'm already here, I'm just going to do a very quick guided run to see if it works and what tuning's left, and then we're going to call it a day, yeah? Okay. Mission synchronized. Check it out. First mission I've ever done. This should be good. Okay, I'm slipping a bit more into an accent now. Put this in. I'm going to put it down to there. Start the mission. Holy sh! Okay, first waypoint coming up. Okay, RTL. <laughs> it's driving itself right now. I am not holding anything. Is this RTL working as intended? I am glad I configured that. Oh my god. Woo <laughs> boy! Oh boy! For a moment now, I thought it was lost out there. Oh, I've got some adrenaline going now. Let's try that again. I used the same mission plan this time around, but quickly found issues. As you can see, the right motor had failed, and all I had was the left going around in circles. My first rescue attempt ended up pushing him out further into the lake. But luckily, using acro mode, I was able to engage a kind of reverse, which was just enough momentum to bring him back to the shoreline. Yeah, that happened again. See you in the next video. Bye. Okay, sneaky little extra. I wasn't kidding about stopping here. This guy has got a bad motor again on the right hand side, which means I need to do some more repair work and I can't be asked to do that right now because it's ticking me off that much. I just want to put it away for a couple of weeks. So this is the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed. I'll be back soon with hopefully a working Casper, but until then, have a good one. Mash deck out.